So in this video we will have to make sure that we can actually attack the enemy with our weapon or our sword. So if we go to the player, find him here, we will need to create a collider for his sword. So let's just um, click on the player and then go to the sprite renderer here and select an attack sprite. Because an attack sprite will make it easier for us to determine where we need to put the collider. So let's see, we need a standing attack and let's just take this one. The only thing you need is basically um, this um, arch here so that we can put up a collider that fits with this one. Um, I don't think he leans more forward in any of them. See here? Nope. So this is basically his attack. The, the white um, thing here is, is going to be the area where we can attack the enemy. <clears throat> So we need to add a new object to him called a sword collider. So select the player, click on create and go to create empty and then rename this one to sword collider. And then put it as a child object of our player. The sword collider needs to be some type of collider. So there are different choices here. There's a box collider and so on, but we need to add an edge collider so that we can shape it exactly as we want to. So at the edge collider, and as you can see, it makes a line here on top of the player. We'll have to take this one and move it to the middle maybe. And then select the edit collider. When you've done that, we can actually stretch it out to make it fit around this part here. So basically, you have to make some kind of like half moon or something, like half circle, um, to make the collider fit from here and all the way around. So to do that, just click anywhere on the collider and move it a little. Then you get another edge, so you can take this one and move out here, and then click a little in, and take the outer one and move here. And when you're done that, you can actually just keep dragging out the line so that it starts to fit or fill out, <coughs> fill out the part where he is hitting the enemy. Let's see here, here, and this part. So you can be more precise than I am if you want to. Um, but the most important part is that his collider fits this area here where he's attacking. So we need to tag this one as player sword or something. So click on tag and add a tag and call it. Let's just call this one sword as we did with the knife. There we go. So now we have a sword tag and click on the sword collider and tag it as the sword. When you've done that, we will need to make sure that we show this collider when we attack. So it shouldn't be shown at all times because if we show it at all times, we can just run into the enemy and she will actually die because we run into her with this collider up. So disable it from the get go. And then we'll have to go to our click on our player and we'll need a reference to our sword collider somehow. So right now we have our health and our movement speed and so on. But we also need a reference to the sword collider. So um, open your scripts and find your character script. And we are going to do this in the character script because our enemy and our player both need this collider. So I'm just going to drag it off screen here. And in here we'll have to make a new private game object. Or let's actually make it. Let's make it public uh, game object and um, actually private game object and call it sword collider. And actually, we can actually make it into a um, collider. Can, can we actually take an edge collider there? So, this is our sword collider. Um, it's private right now, but we can make it serialized field so we can see it from the outside and then we will have to make a get to it so that we can access it from our animations uh, we can do that in a few seconds besides that we will need to create a new function called uh, attack so inside your uh, character go to the bottom here before and trigger enter and make a public void 
attack. And this attack function um, will have to, uh, what should I say, it will have to be enable the collider and dis disable it again. Uh, and it says here we already have attack. Let's see, why do we have something called attack? There, okay, so we have a bool called attack. So we can call it melee attack instead. So rename it to melee attack so we don't have any name uh, confusion here. Then we can say sort collider dot enabled equals sort collider dot enabled with an exclamation mark in front of it so we get it like the opposite of it. So if we, it's enabled it will disable it and if it is disabled it will enable it. So now we'll need to enable it somewhere um, and we can do that in our animation. So let's go to animation, click on the player and then find the attack function. Let's find the attack here. And then we'll have to find the correct sprite um, if we somehow can draw it down here, find find our player. We can see um, which sprite we should start enabling it on. We'll see basically we can enable it from, I don't know if we should start with this one or this one. Um, let's Let's start with five. So we can click on the fifth one or actually, let's do it on the fifth one. On the fifth one and click on the add event, double click on it, select the functions and then find the one called melee attack. So now it's calling melee attack when he starts attacking. But we will also have to disable it somehow. So we'll have to go to our um, animator and find our action states and then find attack and then open up the attack behavior. And in here, we'll have to make sure that we disable it when he's done attacking. So in the on state exit, we'll have to access um, animator dot get component character melee attack. So we have to call the function again to disable this function as well, disable this component as well. Um, Let's see. I'm actually not sure if we are triggering the attack function every time we press the space button. So I'll have to test that out. Uh, let's see here. So we have our game here. Let's find the player. And right now the player doesn't have a reference to his sword collider. So just take the sword collider and drag it onto this. You'll have to do it again because I, I played the game before I did this. Um, but if I attack, you'll see that the, the collider is presented whenever the player attacks something. And we can't spam it, so it makes sense. Okay, so it works. So now you can see we can actually make a collider in front of us every time we attack so, so that we can actually collide with the enemy now. So to be able to see this, you can just click on your player and then run around and attack something. Um, click on the player again when you're done playing and take the sword collider again and put it onto the spot down here. Maybe you can't see it from my image here, but on the player script, there's a sp spot called sword collider and you can drag it onto the empty slot here. Just take the sword collider and drag it onto there. The next thing we'll have to do is to make sure that we can damage our enemy. So if we go to the character script again, um, uh, where is it? There. We'll see we have this on trigger enter and it's only if we get hit by a knife. But right now we have two different um, damage sources, so to say. And we also need to make sure that the player can take damage at some point. So instead of just checking for knife, we'll have to check for something else because the player doesn't get hit by a knife, he gets hit by an enemy knife and so on. And the reason that I'm using two different tags is to prevent the player from hitting himself and is to prevent the, what's called the enemy from uh, hitting herself as well. Um, we could make some functionality that ign ignores some colliders or something, but it is easier just to make some tags. So we need to make sure that we define somehow all the tags that we can um, collide with. 
So in the top here, we need to make a new list. So we can make a private, a private list. And it's going to be a list like this. And then you can simply right click on the list, quick actions, and using system dot collections dot generics. And if you don't have that, you can go up here and write system collection generics here. And it needs to contain strings. And this is my damage sources. So this one will contain every single damage source that I have in my game. Um, Actually, I'm not even sure I need to instantiate it. I can simply do it like this because I'm going to instantiate it from the inspector. Um, so now that I have my damage sources, I can go down here and say uh, and check if the damage sources contains whatever tag comes here. So I can say damage sources dot contains other dot tag. So we will have a list of strings, so we can say knife, um, sword, um, arrow, and so on. We can add that to the list. And then we're going to check when we take a hit, we check if the damage sources contains the tag that we can take damage from. If it contains the tag, well, then we are going to start the take damage coroutine here. So let's go back into Unity, and then we can select the enemy. And on the enemy script, we now have something called damage sources in a second. Give me a sec. I think I forgot to make it serialized. There we go. So we need to make this damage sources serialized to a serialized field. And save and jump back into Unity. There we go. So now it popped up here, damage sources. And we need two damage sources. So you write two. The first one is knife. We can take damage from knife. And now we can also take damage from sword as the enemy. So these are my two damage sources as an enemy. Which means that if I get hit by the sword now, I will take damage. And if I get hit by the knife now, I will also take some damage. So let's try to play this actually, just to check it out if it works. If I jump up here, it still shows the collider. If we do like this, the collider is out. And we are sure that the collider has a tag on it. So let's see what happens if I go up here, attack. Then it's all that the enemy got attacked by my sword. And okay, I need to fix it. I think I uncommented the code. Um, let's see, animations, enemy. And I forgot to save when I closed Unity before. And let's say enemy death and loop time. There we go. Okay, another thing. We had some insane screen shake kind of thing. So you can see here when I hit the enemy. And the reason we get this jump shake thing is because my sword collider here is not a trigger. And that's not the point. We will need to set um, a trigger for our, uh, set our sword collider as a trigger here so we don't get that crazy effect. And right now it's saying that the enemy sword collider is not assigned and that makes sense because we haven't made, made a sword collider yet for our enemy <clears throat> so this exception is unavoidable right now so just ignore it for a few seconds and we'll fix it so let's try again we have our enemy we can attack him she takes damage and then she died so now i am actually able to attack my enemy with the player sword but if i go up here um, I'm not even sure. Let's see if it even works. If I if I have the player here and I jump and attack, then it still makes it okay. Because of course the uh, attack function runs underneath, like the throw function runs underneath. So yeah, attack, not throw. So I can also attack my enemy um, from by jumping like this. Now you show that she died right away because I gave her two hits. Um, we click on the enemy and we increase her health to, yeah, it is 30. So she should take three hits, but she just took two hits here. As you can see, if I jump and apparently if I hit her correctly, then she can die from almost one hit here. There, she already died. 
because I exited the collider and entered again. So we'll have to make a fix so that we can't just one shot her with one hit, even though she has uh, 30 health. That doesn't make any sense if we can do that. There we go again. So let's make a fix for that. So the reason that it does that is because our sword collides with the side of the enemy. And when the sword collides with the side of the enemy, it also takes damage because I have learned that everything underneath here, um, if the side has a trigger on it, it will call the on trigger enter function in its parent, apparently. So to make sure that the side can't um, collide with my sword, I'll have to add a on trigger enter function or not an ignore collider script. So go to scripts, take ignore collision and add it to the side. And then the other collider that this one should ignore is my sword collider from the player. And let's see here, what else do we have? We also have the enemy and this one shouldn't ignore anything. It should take the damage from uh, the sword collider. This is fine. Um, we also have the knife position. It doesn't have collider on it, but I'm not sure if it actually triggers it. Let's see if we can still kill the enemy with one shot. And there we go. Now she should take three shots no matter what. Let's try one more time. There we go. Okay, so I managed to hit her twice because I jumped through her. And then I turned around and hit her again. So to fix this, we will have to put some kind of cooldown on it. Or, um, yeah, we will have to put some kind of cooldown on damage taken on the enemy if we want to. But this will also prevent us from throwing knives as fast if we put that kind of cooldown on it. So um, we will need to figure out later what to do about this little uh, thing here. But I think I'll leave it to the end uh, because now we all already have the functionality for tagging. I am going to end this video here. In the next video, we will take a closer look at the damage sources from our enemy so that he can start damaging our player and killing the player. Um, this means that we will have to add some collision between the player and the enemy knives and we will have to add a sword collider to the enemy. Um, if you haven't done it already, then do not forget to subscribe to the channel, like my Facebook page and follow me on Twitter. Um, also, if you want to support me, um, you can do this in two different ways, because remember that Inscope Studios is a community founded page. Uh, you can support me by either going to the Patreon page or by uh, downloading this project or any of my other projects. Also, it helped me out a lot if you share any of my tutorials on some social media or something, so I get more traffic on my site. Thank you very much for watching.